Welcome to Unfreeze Your Science, a podcast powered by CryoPDP, a temperature-controlled logistics company for the life sciences and healthcare industries. And now, it's time to unfreeze. Hi, so my name is Cristina Nunes and I'm a doctor at CryoPDP in Lisbon, Portugal. Thanks for having me in your podcast, it's an honor. And I've been invited here to talk about the Rare Disease Day. I'm not by any means a specialist on rare diseases, just a general practitioner, but I'm glad to be here talking about this and raising awareness to this theme. So the Rare Disease Day happens on the last day of February every year, So it happens on the 29th this year. It has ha it's been happening yearly since 2008, when the first events took place, initially in only 18 countries, but it has been growing every year. And in 2023, there were events in more than 100 countries worldwide. So maybe we'll start with the definition of rare disease. Uh, the World Health Organization defines rare disease as a condition that affects less than one in 2,000 people. It may not seem like much, but there are over 6,000 rare diseases identified until now, not to mention the ones that are not identified, that don't have a name, and that may occur in only one individual. This means that all around the world, these diseases affect over 300 million people and their families. It's a lot, kind of hard to believe because we're talking about diseases that individually affect so few people. And as I said before, there are over 6,000 rare diseases identified, so there is a great variety of them. And the vast majority are genetic, more than 70%, and most of them with no cure. So they may be so serious that the individual dies very young, or they may allow to have a normal lifespan and the person lives his entire life with it as a chronic disease. And these diseases include pediatric cancers, which are all considered rare diseases, and one in every five cancers in adults are also considered rare diseases. These patients may have physical disabilities, cognitive impairment, metabolic dysfunctions, you name it. Sometimes a person can even have more than one rare disease. And some of these patients are obviously different, others may seem perfectly normal. And these diseases pose great challenges at many levels. Most people don't know they exist, so the first big problem is diagnosis. The diagnosis of a disease, to diagnose it, we have to know of its, ex of its existence. There must be a suspicion. And when making a diagnosis, We, doctors, will always think about the diseases that are more frequent and only after excluding these, we will think about the less frequent ones. Also, they usually don't have or present with typical symptoms or signs specific to that disease, called pathognomonic signs, so they may be hard to distinguish from other more common diseases. Adding to this, The clinical presentation may not be the same for everyone within the same rare disease because each person is different and may present different manifestations within the clinical picture of the same disease. So there are individual changes. This is true not only for rare diseases, it's true for all diseases, but makes the diagnosis harder for uh, rare diseases even harder. Uh, so it's a great challenge to make the diagnosis of these diseases. And it's quite understandable that in most cases, there is a significant delay and commonly incorrect initial diagnosis, sometimes for years. Another big problem for these diseases lies in the fact that it's hard to do research when there are only few people to study. And also there tends to be a little financial investment for research, whether public or private, because there can be no investment if there is no knowledge of the existence of these, disease, existence of these diseases and because the cost-benefit ends, ends up being quite high for each specific disease. This leads to little information, little scientific evidence about the origin, about the diagnosis, about the treatment, care or cure, and about the evolution of the diseases themselves. 
Furthermore, it is difficult to find health professionals with experience in each disease and even harder to find treatments specifically suited to each one and to have access to them, not to mention access to financial and social support adequate to each case. Taking into account that most of these diagnoses are genetic in origin, that may appear in childhood, often with no existing effective cures and sometimes with lack of loss or autonomy due to chronic progressive, sometimes degenerative and frequently life-threatening aspects, it is easy to understand how the quality of life of these patients can be affected and the high level of pain and suffering endured by patients and their families. So there is a great impact and burden on both patient and families at many uh, at so many levels if like for example emotion emotional because it's hard to be different there is a tendency to have anger resentment for being ill a tendency to be depressed for being different or because of the disabilities for the lack of autonomy and for the isolation these patients end up facing economically because sometimes cares and treatments to these diseases can be very expensive and hard to get expensive medicine, several surgeries, you name it. Sometimes they need someone to care for them all the time, so one of the parents may have to quit their job and have no income, and it's very hard for people with disabilities to have themselves a job. So these families tend to have quite a financial struggle. And socially, since they tend to isolate themselves from the community and also to be marginalized by others because of their differences, because of their disabilities, because they cannot attend the same school as a normal kid, for example, or do the same activities because of their physical disabilities, the barriers, visible or not, are many and immense. This is why it is so important to raise awareness about these diseases, so that the knowledge about rare diseases can be spread, so that the investment and the research can be increased, because there needs to be international research so that specialists, whether doctors or investigators, can be in contact. And so that there can be improvement in treatments, therapies, perhaps even cures. In order for these people and families to have equal access to healthcare and adequate support so that their lives can be better, easier, more dignified. Taking into account all the suffering and limitations they already face just for having these diseases, this is certainly more than fair, it's essential. In this context, the World Rare Disease Day emerges precisely to raise awareness and sensitize people worldwide to this theme, along with raising help. The long-term cause of the Rare Disease Day campaign is to achieve equitable access to diagnosis, treatment, health, and social care, social opportunities for these people affected by rare diseases. This day is an opportunity to advocate for rare diseases as human rights priority locally, nationally and internationally, internationally as we work towards a more inclusive society. There is a website which is www.rarediseaseday.org It has a lot of information about rare diseases and the Rare Disease Day. There are several stories, testimonials about people with rare diseases. We have Riza from Iran with, with cystocinosis, for example, a disease that leads to the accumulation of an immune amino acid called cysteine, which builds up in tissues, mainly in the eye and the kidney, eventually leading to the need of a kidney transplant. There's Nizia from Mexico with Turner's disease, which is caused by the shortage of one of the X chromosomes, so it only affects women. There's usually undeveloped ovaries, and there can be several cardiac and kidney complications. There's Taka from Japan with retinitis pigmentosa, a degenerative disease of the retina, which leads to progressive loss of vision, eventually ending in blindness, in blindness or almost blindness. There's John Christian from Norway with osteogenesis imperfecta, a disease that affects collagen and makes bones weaker, so they break easier than normal, sometimes even without contact, just by movement. It may also cause neurosensorial, neurosensorial deafness, and it is very limiting disease that makes patients very dependent on others. 
and several other examples. These were just four examples. There are several in the, in the website of people living with rare diseases. It is very interesting, so I encourage everyone to visit the website and find a little bit more about this. And how can we help? So one way it's to attend the events. There are several in-person events all over the world and also online webinars. The list of events is on their website. Another way to, to help is to raise awareness on social media. Lighting up for the rare, for example, on the 29th of February and sharing it on Facebook, Instagram, or other social media. There are filters, cards, profile frames, banners, a lot of things for Instagram, Facebook, and other social media. Virtual back backgrounds for Zoom and Google Meets and Teams. Posters and videos you can share. School kids to help the teachers talk to the children of different ages about this theme. A lot of material, elusive to Rare Disease Day, to download. A lot, another way to help, it is to raise or make donations for the rare disease organizations, which exist all over the world and which are all on the, the website. And another, it's to volunteer to support these families and these individuals. So we all can help. So please go to the website www.raredeseaseday.org and see for yourself. And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned and discover more about the work of our guests in the description. Podcast powered by CryoPDP, a temperature controlled logistics company for the life sciences and healthcare industries.